briefly uh, explain to us uh, what is a, a digital twin and uh, what problems does it seek to solve? That's a, that's a great question. It's the first question I always get, what is a digital twin? Um, and I think in its simplest form, it is a virtual representation of an entity. You know, that's a very simple one. But I think if you expand it a little bit further, it's really a synchronized instance um, of a digital model or a, or, or, or a, a template um, that represents an entity throughout its life cycle. And it's sufficient to, to meet the requirements of a very specific uh, use case that the digital twin is meant to address. I also think, you know, from, a, from the problems that it is meant to solve, the original intent by Dr. Michael Greaves, who's kind of um, the father of the digital twin, was really um, that you could create a, a information construct for a physical asset. So the, the, the intent from their side, uh, um, specifically working with NASA, was that uh, it could provide the same or better information um, that you would get than having the physical thing with you. So it was all around systems that are getting more complex and how can we reduce the complexity by creating a digital version of it. And, and what we see right now, kind of the main uses or main objectives um, and uh, problems that it addresses is really around how can I get more situational awareness um, around what's going on? So uh, how can I get better insights into how a physical thing would um, uh, behave? And how can I make better uh, decisions based on that uh, model that I have and that represents the real physical entity and its operating conditions. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you mentioned something to the effect that a, a digital twin uh, is an instance of a, a digital model. Uh, could you please uh, elaborate on uh, the digital model uh, uh, concept and also on the aspect of instantiation? I think those are two very key aspects of um, having a digital twin. Um, so you, you obviously have to have the physical thing, but then you also have to have a model that would describe that basically the information model or prototype or template or the way that uh, that, that would describe the, the, the physical thing. Um, and then I would have instances of that. So the best way is to describe it by an example. If I have, a, so for example, for a Tesla Model 3, um, there is a type or a, pro, a, a, a template that describe what the Model 3, um, all the components that it's got. And then I have, so and there's only one of that that describe this is a Model 3. I may have a million instances, which is unique to every single car that is built, the real-time data that's getting from telemetry, um, information um, that, that around the color, the, it is unique per, per vehicle. So there's a unique instance or unique uh, instance identifier, but it relates back to a model that says, this is how I store the information and this is how I interact with that information based on my template for that. So that is the model and the multiple instances on that. For some uh, types of equipment like a building, you will have a model, but you'll only have one instance. Um, so there's, it doesn't always have to be uh, multiples, but in most instances it, are, it, it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense now. Uh, so in your, in your ebook, you, you sort of uh, mentioned the different uh, categories and types of digital twins that uh, uh, are available. Uh, could you uh, perhaps uh, describe to us what are the different types of um, digital twins and the different categories of uh, digital twins? So we kind of see my three main use cases of digital twins. The one is, uh, or types, if you want to call them that. The one is around just status monitoring. We call it a status twin. So it's a, it's a single direction. I'm just getting real-time data that represents this is what's happening to my twin. So I can get the status of, of, of um, an operating plant, a machine, a building, or anything that I want to rep, even a supply chain. Um, I don't interact with it. I don't um, uh, uh, create any 
actions coming out of it, which is kind of the second type, which is what we call an operational twin. This is when the twin also has some intelligence where it can now interact. It can create actions in other systems. It can create work orders. It can update um, uh, supply chain information and basically interact. That is what we would, would refer to as an operational twin. So it becomes part of the, the uh, operations um, of a business. And then, um, Another key use is when you have a, when you have a, or use a twin for simulation. So I can get some real-time data, pass it to a model. It would run a number of simulations, and based on the output of the simulation, I would then take a decision on what I want to do um, uh, from from a decision point of view. Um, and, and again, that is the simulation twin. So status twin, operations twin, and simulation twin are the three main patterns that we see of digital twin types.